For part two of our chemistry segment, we're rejoined by Jesse Miller from the U of I Teaching Lab Specialist and REACT Program Director. And you brought Robert's favorite play around That's right. toy, liquid This, this and, uh, and uh, dry ice is, I yes. think, his Those favorite the, things to play with. the two most fun things you have. <laughs> okay, and the reason why I brought this is because we're going to talk about superconductors. Okay. And this is a this is a superconductor. It doesn't look like much. It's, it's just a black ceramic. This is um, what we call a Y or one two three superconductor. And the one two three stands for the ratio of the molecules. So okay. it's yttrium, barium, and copper. And it's a one two three ratio of of those three things. Got it. And this is ceramic. Now, um, this little square here that I got mm -hmm. is a neodymium neodymium excuse me um, magnet. Right. So it's a pretty strong magnet, mm -hmm. but it. It's not really doing anything with the superconductor because the superconductor only works if you get it cold enough. Uh -huh. um, it turns out that certain materials, once they get really cold, they go through this critical temperature below which um, they start they start acting they start having superconducting properties. And what superconducting properties means is, is that there's no energy loss as it conducts electricity. Okay, and there's a there's a couple of theories as to why one of them uh, the easiest one to to understand and explain is that instead of Instead of normally when you conduct electricity, its electrons are flowing. In a superconductor, it's kind of pairs of electrons okay. that it flows through. And because of that and a lot of other really physical chemistry type things, um, it, there's no energy loss for the electrical flow. So these obviously have some really cool uh, uh, prospects. The problem with them is they don't have any upper room temperature yet. Uh. They're getting higher and higher and higher. This particular one is about um, 90 degrees Kelvin, which is about... What minus 180 degrees um, centigrade? Okay. So and then they've gotten up to I think 150 degrees Kelvin. So they're getting closer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to demonstrate and so listen to me talk constantly, um, we're going to pour some liquid nitrogen on here because now liquid nitrogen is about 77 Kelvin, okay. which is colder than the critical temperature that you need. So we should be able to cool this down enough. Well, watch yourself. Um, you know, liquid nitrogen is boiling cold, right? Yes. As you can see, it's boiling, boiling off, and that'll get that superconductor cold enough. Now, when it gets cold enough and it starts, uh, oh, now it's really boiling. That's right. When it starts being a superconductor, it has an interesting property that if you it, it repels, so to speak, magnetic fields. Okay. okay. So even though this is not magnetic, right. putting a magnet on top of it, it's going to push against, so to speak, the magnetic field uh, on this this magnet here Whoa, and as you can see can fancy. you get down in that yeah, on that on focus it. a little bit yeah you Look can you can see how it's levitating there that's cool yeah now obviously this has some really interesting uh, uh, possible applications if you mm -hmm. know for the maglev oh. trains and things like that oh yeah popped off that was the nitrogen flowing around it there you go you can get that spin <laughs> without knocking it off there you go you got it oh there you go yeah. sweet and it, it spin like that for quite some time because there's just no resistance. The only resistance is the air from the or the uh, nitrogen, oh, and okay. uh, there's you know, like no resistance to it. So, so how can we use this? To, to well, you know, right now you can't really. I mean, they use it in like uh, uh, NMR uh, for you're getting an MRI or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're using those those big magnets they put you in. Right. Those are usually cooled by liquid helium because they're using superconducting wire to go through those in order to get that kind of a magnetic field that they need. Hmm. Uh, because it, 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 you know the, the electricity flows through it, it produces a magnetic field. Sure. Um, and so there's applications right now that they use that for. It's really expensive though, and you have to use liquid helium, which is... You don't have a whole bunch of that line. Yeah, it's, it's pretty expensive. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I just thought I'd show you this because it's just, it's just darn cool. Now if they can ever get a superconductor up to room temperature, then you can have applications like you know magnetic lift uh, trains and things like that that would just be Wow. You know, fantastic as far as, you know, no energy. That's pretty cool. All right, Jesse. Thank you for coming in today. Oh, fantastic. We appreciate your time. You want to see this uh, little spinning magic chemistry <laughs> trick again?